Howdy! A big thing happened. I finished the first draft of Rosehead, my second novel, and as the custom is, I'll do a little reading from the first chapter. Chapter 1. Arrival. The garden reeked of rotten sweetness, as if the roses were not blooming, but rather decomposing in the heat. The sea of them, like a hungry red tongue, licked the west side of an enormous white mansion, forming a spectacular dead end. On its east side, scores of linden trees framed the sky in a lacquered pattern of green. As far as the eye could see, the entire road was planted with these trees, which confirmed the name on a tall post, Lindenstrasse, in German. Lilith Bloom wrinkled her nose and pushed the button to roll up the car window, having a peculiar feeling that once she steps into this house, she won't be able to get out. It will swallow her whole and smack its lips in the process. Goodbye, eighth grade. Goodbye, ballet lessons. Goodbye, books. She shuddered, feeling frozen despite the hot weather. Panther, Lilith whispered. Panther, wake up. She reached out and urgently shook a black curled up shape on the black seat to her left, warm from the sun. The shape shivered and yawned. <gasps> Revealing a long pink tongue and rows of pearl white teeth, then promptly sat up, looking expectantly at his mistress. It wasn't exactly a dog, not in the most typical sense of how one would describe it. It was rather a cat in a dog's body, an independent creature with leaps and movements and a mind of his own. In one word, a whippet, Lilith's pet and best friend. Faithful, smart, and, as Lilith would ascertain her parents, a talking one too. Of course, they refused to believe her. Panther was the runt of the litter. Lilith's father, Alexander Bloom, or Al for short, was a whippet breeder and he gave Panther to her for her 12th birthday last year. That was back in July, in her hometown in Massachusetts. Now it was June, and they arrived in Germany this afternoon, driving up to her grandfather's house on the outskirts of Berlin for the Grand Bloom family reunion. Does it stink to you too? Lilith asked Panther to confirm his suspicions. Panther tipped his head to the right, blinking his black jewel eyes. He didn't dare talking in front of her parents, lest they decide to take him away, show him off to their whippet breeder friends like some otherworldly miracle. I thought so, Lilith palmed the end of her skirt. Well, we're here, her father professed without glancing back, turning off the car engine and pulling up the parking brake. Did you take your pills? That would be Lilith's mother, Gabrielle Bloom, swiftly swiss twisting in passenger seat and gazing through metal-rimmed glasses with her typical demand, her fingers in the momentary pause from constant knitting. Lilith rolled her eyes. Pills are for sick people, mother. Well, did you? Her mother insisted, her lower lip beginning to tremble slightly. Overall, she looked like a lost bird perched on top of a roof, not knowing whether she wants to take off and fly towards summer or stay in nest for winter, risking to freeze off her feathers and talons and such. Her graying brown hair stuck out this way and that in sort of an artistic halo, and she liked sticking her knitting needles behind her ears where, she, where they would stay and sometimes drop into the frying pan while she was cooking dinner. Lilith, answer you, mother. Her father demanded softly, without turning his head, rummaging in his pockets. I flushed them down the toilet on the airplane. They look like these two teeny boats in an excruciatingly blue liquid, Lilith said with an innocent face. She liked using sophisticated words like excruciatingly, especially when annoying her parents. Ah, Gabrielle addressed Lilith's father. He only shrugged his shoulders without looking. Oh, Gabby, not used to worry. She can skip a day, can she? Lilith! What followed was a frenzy of activity, her mother's hands performing an intricate dance of pulling out her bag, stuffing rolls of wool into it, her half-knit sweater, a bunch of needles, and then rummaging through the vial of pills. Lilith and Panther exchanged a glance, suppressing a collective giggle, as much as you can imagine a dog giggling. Next, her mother stuffed a small translucent cylinder into her daughter's hands and watched her reluctantly open it and take out two bright pills. 
Now, her mother said, and Lilith obediently stuck two pills under her tongue with the intention of spitting them out as soon as she stepped out of the car, which her father did already, slamming the driver's door carelessly and stretching out his legs. Well, that should do it, don't you think? Thank you for listening.